Welcome back to The Gun Collective. My name is John Patton and boys and girls, we are doing another TGC factory tour. This time we're at YHM in Massachusetts. Let's go inside and check it out. How's it going? I'm Kevin Graham here at YHM, uh, third generation family owned business. Uh, I co-own it with my brother. Uh, YHM, we've been based in Massachusetts since 1951, which is when the company started. Back in 1951, my grandfather, James Graham, started the business with one of his buddies, um, who actually was the owner of Cleanbore. If any of you were back in the shooting, you know, back in the 90s and the 80s, Cleanbore was a big name. My grandfather and Mr. Judd started the company, and this is kind of where it grew. Back in 2013, my brother Chris and I, we took over the company from our father. Um, just within those five years of us being the owners, him and I purchased a new facility. We relocated the whole company um, just to try to stay current and up to times with the industry and that way we can offer a competitive product you know, in a timely fashion. Our new facility uh, offers greater material workflow, which gets product to you guys faster. We've uh, been doing everything from AR-15 accessories, complete AR-15 sound suppressors, and now we're starting to kind of dabble into the bolt action area as well. All right, guys, let's kick this tour off right. We've got Kevin here. He's one of the co-owners of YHM. Kevin, we're standing in some really, really interesting old machines. What are these all about, man? These, I mean, these are older than I am, oh, older yeah. than you are put together. What, yep. what is this? So these are our presses. We use these for doing identification markings on our lower receivers. Okay, so you're pressing them in instead of laser like a lot of guys do. Why is that? The reason we do that is we find it's faster in order to meet the minimum depth requirements per the ATF specs. Okay, so you're able to get the standard completed way faster with these machines. Yes. Okay, interesting. Well, let's uh, keep on moving and see if we can find a resonator. Sure. How about that? Let's do that. One of the machines back here I thought was really interesting and you said that was part of how the resonator gets made, which is one of the things we're going to be looking at today. Correct, yep. So what do we, we just have like a, a cut saw on this thing here? Yeah, so what this is, it's a Cincinnati Miller, and it's basically a horizontal milling machine. You have your spindle that comes horizontally, and you put the part on the table. And so what we do that for here is we actually use that for clipping the baffles for the uh, resonator. Okay. Um, you put the part on the mandrel, and you close the mandrel, and you send the table under it, and it slides under the cutter, and the cutter scoops it for you. All right. Okay, so this is the first stop on our tour. This is kind of where you keep all the raw materials, right? Right, yep. So tell me about what's going on here. So this is some of our handguard extrusion. It comes into us basically with the generic shape to the handguard already in it. Yeah, you guys can kind of see the world's largest quad rail going on here. I think I'm gonna put this on my 6.5 Creedmoor and be the cool guy in town. What do you think? I think it's a good call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one of the things you were telling me before was that everything here in this area has already been quality control checked. That's Explain correct. that. Yeah, so our loading dock is literally right there. Okay. So once the truck's unloaded, there's a staging area where the raw material sits and then QC comes in, verifies that the product is both to spec size-wise and that they uh, composites of it match what is required on our certification. Okay, so once the material is quality checked, we we are then able to cut it up and take it to the various machines. That's correct. What other kind of parts do we see here out of these sure. extrusions? So we have a few different extrusions. This one here is for our bipod mount. Okay, so we've got a bipod mount. We this obviously our... looks like some scope rings. Yep, exactly. And then what else? This is for our SLK series of handguards, which okay. is kind of our slimmer low profile handguard. Okay, so a smaller low profile, and then we've got another one that looks like maybe a riser? Yep, exactly. Awesome, okay, let's keep rolling. Cool. So we've got a whole bunch of bar stock over here. What's all this about? Yeah, so this is where we get all of our material for both, for making our muzzle accessories, flash hiders, muzzle brakes, you know, QD mounts, and okay. as well as our sound suppressors. All of our sound suppressors start off as solid 12 foot bars of steel. Okay, so this is where the baffles, the tubes, all the back ends, yep, that's all correct. that's made here. Yes. Okay, so what else we have? We've got a lot of raw materials here. Let's check out some more stuff. Sure. As you know, YHM produces a lot of different product. This is one of the okay. extrusions for our low profile gas blocks that we offer. And that's a really popular it item. Is. It is. Right? It's one of our best sellers. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, gas blocks are one of our top sellers. Okay, and then we've got this one, which has been around for a long time. That's correct, yep. So this is a casting for our front sight tower base. Basically, it's a front sight gas block combo. 
and you cast because it's a more complex part. More so com getting to the final is a little bit less machine time with That's this. That's correct, yep. Okay, yep. very cool. Well, why don't we take a look at how a resonator comes to be? Let's get started on that. Sure. All right. So once it comes off the bandsaw, it goes into these lays behind us. Correct. And this is what part? This is the blast chamber for the resonator. Basically, the part that accepts the QD mount and will also house the serialization section of the suppressor. Okay, and we're starting, so we're threading the back end. Yep. We're going to start kind of reaming out the center part. Correct. And kind of forming it into what we know is the back end of the can. That's correct. Very cool, very cool. All right, let's keep moving. Sure. So moving on down the line here, literally yep. the next machine over, what do we have? So in this machine, we're making what we call our blast baffle retainer. Okay. Basically, it houses the blast baffle for the resonator, which is the very first baffle inside the suppressor. Okay, and that's made out of what kind of material? So the retainer is made out of heat shoot 17-4 stainless. Okay. And then the blast baffle is this piece here, which is all 718 ink canal. Okay, so we've got an ink canal blast baffle Correct. and a 17-4 retainer for that. Exactly. And that, that back end, and kind of comes on to this yep. and seals everything together that's when correct. it's welded. Yep, the back half kind of overlaps this seam and that's one of the weld points. Okay, that's very interesting. So why the Inconel versus uh, the, the set, there straight 17 4 Yeah, the reason that we do the Inconel blast baffle is it's a lot more abrasion resistant than just 17-4 stainless right. steel. So, you know, the, the blast baffle is really taking most of the abuse in the suppressor. Sure. You're essentially blasting that with, you know, unburnt powder that's high temperature. Right. So you're essentially sandblasting the inside of your suppressor. Right, and a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually get baffle erosion that's in rifle cans from the, exactly that. Yep. So yep. you went with the in canal, which is way more durable. Right. Very cool. Let's, uh, let's keep moving. Sure. All right, so we looked at the blast chamber and the blast baffle. Correct. Then what's next in the suppressor? So next in line of the suppressor is the baffles. Yeah, the resonator uses, utilizes eight of these. Eight baffles? That's correct. Okay, and, and there was another operation we looked at, and that is what? Tell me, tell me what happens to these. So basically, these come off the lathe. They come off after one operation looking just like this, and then they go to our milling department where we actually clip the side of the baffle to distort the gas flow. Okay, and what is that? Does that help with sound suppression? It, it does, it okay. does. It helps in basically create more turbulence inside the suppressor, which reduces the sound even more than just having a straight cone. Okay, okay, and really the entire idea is to slow and cool the gases coming out of exactly. the muzzle. Exactly, exactly. Very cool, this is super clean. Very, very cool. What's next? Uh, up next is we will assemble the unit and do a weld. All right, let's go do that. Let's do it. So we've come over to the other side of the factory to check out some more stuff. What are we looking at? So this is our initial operations of assembling a resonator. Okay. So one of the first steps is we use this heat treat oven to heat treat the Inconel blast baffle. Okay. And once that's heat treated, it gets drilled out and then we come over here and start the welding process. That's correct. So at our welding station here, how do things start to come together? Explain that to me. Yeah, so basically the operator will pull parts from our secured cage next door, okay. and they will get a, basically everything set up. And the assembly of the resonator starts with the blast chamber. Okay. Which has, and it's already got the serial number on it That's at that correct. Because this is the serialized part. Though. Yes. You know, the, the concept is if you ever were to get some wacky thing like an unstable bullet coming out or a non-concentric bore, right. you can kind of hack the, the front end of the can off and replace uh, everything forward of this, yes. right? Yes. Yep. That was one of the main design features um, or benefits of the turbo, the resonator, and the nitro. Okay. So they've all, basically all your cans have that same concept. Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. So on the blast chamber, what do we put on here? How does this go so together? So next from the blast chamber, we do our blast baffle assembly. Which, which has just been heat treated that is and correct. drilled out. Okay, yep. that's the in canal and the 17-4 unit. That's correct. So those two pieces fit right into, press the, together. into the blast chamber. Oh, look at that, that's clean. Okay. And then from there, we take our stack of baffles. It utilizes eight baffles. Okay. We take our eight baffles with the slit already cut in them. That is correct. Now, do you stagger the slits, or is there any kind of nope. rubber reason to what that? What we actually found in the rifle suppressors is the, the notching looks to be pretty much straight in line. Okay. You so know. that works well for you guys. So we line everything up, and then we've got the blast chamber, blast baffle, the baffle stack, and the end cap. Correct. Which is, again, a very simple, clean design. Right. And then it all gets welded. That's correct. So basically, you have your assembly here. And then after the welding operation, you get your finished product, which is right next Check to it. Check this out, guys. That's really cool. 
And what kind of welding are you using here? We're doing CNC TIG welding. CNC TIG welding, okay, yep. very cool. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Sure. Man, this is, this is really cool. Thank you. So we assembled our baffle stack, then what? So next we go to our welding operations. We actually do two different welding operations. The first one is in okay. this machine here, where we do just the baffle stack assembly. Okay. And then from here we go to the welder next to us and adhere the baffles to the blast chamber. Okay, so why, why a, a two-stage thing with the baffle stack first? and then the other. The reason we do that is in case we have a faulty weld off of this operation, we don't risk damage to the serialized blast chamber part of the suppressor. Okay, why don't we get to welding? What let's, do you say? Let's do it. Okay, so we take the completed baffle stacks and then bring them over to the second weld. What's Correct. happening here? So in this operation, what we're doing is we're actually adhering the pre-welded baffle stack assembly to the serialized blast chamber of the suppressor. Okay, very cool. So this is kind of where it becomes a suppressor. That's correct. At least according to normal people and not the ATF. Right, yeah, the <laughs> ATF considers each baffle their own suppressor. So weird, all right, cool, let's check it out. So after we get that kind of final assembly of the tube, what happens next? So after we weld the resonator assembly, then we go to our EDM operation. And what this does is it basically true bores the baffles in perfect alignment to the mounting mechanism that would be on the firearm. Okay, so you have actually, when it's being assembled, it's actually a tighter bore and you do the final cut with this machine. That is correct, yep. So why is that? The reason we do that is the fixturing inside the machine mimics the way our QD mount mechanism works. Okay. So it basically ensures perfect alignment of the mounting mechanism all the way through the length of the suppressor. And of course that cuts down on accidental baffle strikes. Exactly. And stuff from and that concentricity issue that we talked about before. Correct, yep. Okay, very cool. What does uh, EDM stand for? EDM stands for Electrical Discharge Machining. Okay, that's really, really interesting. Yeah. And what does that run, a current through the wire? So basically the way it works is you have a piece of brass wire that runs through deionized water, and it actually arcs electricity back and forth between the wire and the material. The wire doesn't actually contact the metal, it's the little electrical bolt that erode the material away. So you're running a wire through it and it's eroding all the way around. That's correct. That's really interesting. It is. And if you watch right here, it's actually going through and it's gonna re-thread the wire through a new part. Oh, very cool. Okay, so we're switching parts, okay. So what it does is... You can see the wire gonna come down right in there. That's correct. Yep, so... Oh, we dropped the water level too. Yep, the reason we do that is we found that we had to drop the water level because the part's so long in order for the wire to guide all the way straight through it. Because if you think about it, the wire is only 12 thousandths in diameter, basically four times the diameter of a piece of hair. Oh, wow. And it's aligned basically by a jet of water and air, and that's what holds it straight through to the bore of the suppressor to find the bottom head to catch up the wire again. Wow, that's super interesting. It is. And now, is that an industry common practice these days? It's becoming more and more common, especially with stacked together baffle suppressors like this. So here's the, uh, the wire feeding operation. You can see the, the jet of water and the air as I talked about. So it's kind of guiding it through. Exactly. It hooks up to the other side. Yep. And now it refills and then it'll the tank. it'll fill the tank again. Yes. Okay. So you're saying it's becoming more and more common throughout the industry as suppressor technology gets better. It is. Yep. Okay. And uh, you guys have been doing this sort of thing since you introduced the nitro, right? That's correct. Yep. yep. Okay. Very cool. Let's check that out and watch it fill back up and yeah. get going again. So coming from the wire EDM, what's the next step? So next for the resonator after wire EDM is we go to our sandblasting department. Okay. And we do that in order for preparation of our Cerakote application. Okay, so we're basically just taking the kind of final part, prepping it for the final coating. Correct. All right, yep. cool, let's check it out. Sure. So you're installing it on a mandrel? That is correct. So we use this as a driver because inside the automated sandblaster, a spindle turns and then the sandblast nozzles actually come over the part to give us a nice, fine, even sandblast. Awesome. And then we use these two pieces on the end in order to prevent any sand buildup inside of the suppressor. Fantastic, okay.
Now that our sandblasting operation is done, we'll take our resonator out of the sandblaster and bring it on over to Cerico. So we did the wire EDM, we did the sandblasting. Correct. This is what the can would look like completely unprepped, unfinished, Correct. out of that wire EDM tank. Correct. So then we have our final Cerakoted part, and this is a high temp Cerakote, That's right? correct. The, this is the C series, which is good for 1800 degrees. Okay, very, very cool. Okay, so what do we do? Do we have to bake this? Do we have to do anything? No, one of the nice features about the C series is it's an air cure product. And it's dry to touch in 45 minutes, and it's fully cured in five days. Okay, so five days from now, this will be fully cured and we could go out and blast. That's correct. Very cool, guys. The YTM resonator is done. So this is it. We've done the life cycle of the resonator. Tell me about what comes in the package if somebody wanted to get one of sure. these. So when you buy the resonator, uh, you have an option of either our QD flash hider mount or a QD muzzle brake mount. And those have, you say QD because the spring unit, which is normally in everybody else's suppressors and allows you to keep yours down is actually on the muzzle device. That's correct. Okay, cool. So you can pick one of those two and most of the common thread pitches that are out there yes. for these and uh, what else do people get? Let's just go in the box. Sure, yeah. Let's so, see how it comes together. Yeah, so this is the, the boxing of a resonator. So we install the QD mount. Okay, just install the mount, It'll put it in there. Go in, serial number up. That way it makes it easy for dealers to verify their stuff when it comes in. Okay. Instruction manual. That looks great. And this is what happens to you. It's like a lose your damn mind. <laughs> it works. So I actually asked him, what's in the instruction manual for a suppressor? Like, because in my brain, what do you really need to know? But there are some things that people need to know, there like are. how to mount it properly, because some guys just don't know. That's not everybody knows right. that. We're not going to assume yeah, that. A lot of people are new to the product, too. Right. And th with, with the growth of the industry, suppressors are still a new thing. So what else is in there? Something about the warranty, right? Exactly. Um, one of the things that's mentioned in the, the manual is our warranty. And YHM basically has a no questions asked lifetime warranty. That's, and, you know, that's really, really cool. I love is. that. Yep. And uh, you know, it even goes as far as that, you know, in the first instance, if you even purposely blow up the suppressor, we'll still give you a new suppressor and pay your tax stamp for the first time. Really? If you do it again, We'll sell you a replacement suppressor for 50% off MSRP. Do you you don't have anybody like abusing that or anything, right? You I know, guess that's kind of a pain in the arse with the uh, with the tax stamp involved too. So it is. Uh, you probably wouldn't have that too often, right? For the most part, no, because people aren't willing to have to wait another year to get a replacement can. <laughs> so they usually learn after the first instance. Okay, well that is very very cool. Uh, Guys, I appreciate you coming along. Kevin, thank you so thank much you, for letting us come in here and check all this out, showing us yeah. the life cycle of the resonator, all the different machines, all the different products you make. Is there anything else you want to add for the TGC audience? Um, sure, yeah. I mean, just uh, please follow the TGC. They're going to come and do some more stuff with YHM. We'd love to kind of have you guys see what we're up to. Be sure to check them out on social media, Yankee Hill Machine, all over the place. You guys know where they are. And of course, check out YHM.net. Kevin, again, thank you so thank much you, for Kevin. having us out. Thank you. Well, guys, that's it here at YHM. We've seen the resonator come to life. We've seen some of the rails. We've seen their gas blocks. We've seen a lot of the interesting stuff that they do here. And I, I think it's really interesting watching the brand take the next steps and start to evolve and, and push the technology. As the markets change, they are changing. And that is a really, really good thing. And be sure to check out the video on the resonator if you haven't done that already. And guys, that is it. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.